So hi and welcome everybody to the second part of signals and systems. In today's lecture, the content will be structured as follows. We will be discussing the following topics. First, the Fourier transform in terms of 2, two by f instead of w. And then we will discuss some important Fourier transforms for certain functions that are frequently used in signal and systems. And then we will discuss some of the theorems and the properties associated with Fourier transform, and then explain convolution and modulation quickly. And after that, finally, we will be discussing about ideal filters and why do we use them and how they behave in time and the frequency domain. So we explained in the previous lecture briefly about Fourier transform and we said in signal and system course we used to take the Fourier transform as follows in terms of GW in terms of JW G of JW is equal to the Fourier transform which is the integration from minus infinity to infinity to G of T multiplied by the exponential function E to minus JWT delta T and if you if you want to find the signal in time domain, you already know the signal in frequency domain and you want to find it in time domain, you just do the opposite. It's the same operation, but instead of e to minus j, you put the e to j. Now, in, in this class, which is Introduction to Communication Principles, we will replace w with 2 pi f. So we'll no longer deal with w, we deal with 2 pi f. And in this case, what's the Fourier transform of any function like g of t? It's the integration of g of t multiplied by e to minus j 2 pi f t. And if the function in frequency domain, how to go to the time domain, you use this equation. g of t in time domain is equal to the integration from minus infinity to infinity to g of f multiplied by e to j 2 by f t. So we call the first one, this one, we call it forward transfer. And this, we call it backward transfer or inverse transfer. Okay? Forward transfer takes your signal from time to frequency, while this takes your signal from frequency to time. So, when, when do we say that this function has a Fourier transform? This is a possible question that you can be asked. When do we say that I give you five functions and tell you which one of these functions has Fourier transform? Exactly, you should, the integration should be less than infinity. You should be able to integrate it. If you can integrate the function, the absolute value of g of t, and the, you find the value to be less than infinity, then g of f exists for every frequency f, and it's continuous. If g of t has finite energy also, means the absolute value square, the integration of the absolute value square of the function less than infinity, in this case, the transform g of f exists for most frequencies and has finite energy. So basically, if you can find the integration, this means that it has transform in the frequency domain. If g of t is periodic, if it is periodic and has Fourier transform, then you remember in the previous lecture we were talking about Fourier series analysis and it's periodic, it has Fourier transform and also the integration less than infinity, you can find it. In this case, you can represent the transform in this form. It's the summation of the transform at certain frequencies at the harmonics, n, f naught, where n can be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from minus infinity to infinity, multiplied by delta f minus n, f naught. So basically, a series of functions that are defined at certain frequencies is a weighted sum of impulses in frequency domain. Th these are delta impulses, yes, but when you multiply it by the function g of f, it takes the value of that function at the, at the point you define. So basically this is what you need to know. 
and we start we we gave you here and in the previous lecture we explained this example to you if you are given a function which is called one-sided exponential decaying function g of t e to minus alpha t why do we call it decaying function because as t increases the value decreases so what, what, what do you do if i ask you find the fourier transform of this what do you do you just put it in the transform formula and you will integrate it and find the final value to be 1 over alpha plus j2 by f now as you can see although the function was real real yes it's defined over t greater than zero and there is no j in it the output was the transform the output of the transform is basically complex because there is j so since g of t has finite area you can integrate it and that's why it has transform and it's a transform is continuous and we can notice also that even though g of t is real it's a transform is complex valued this is the usual situation so and then we we said what if we want to try to draw the amplitude and phase of this transform you just it tried to get the absolute value of this function and the phase of this function. If you can find it, you just take points at different frequencies, find the values, and then connect between them to find the amplitude and phase. And we did the same. But here, the trick that uh, we used in this slide is to multiply by the conjugate, we want to get rid of j. So we multiply by the, by the conjugate of the denominator what's the conjugate of the denominator if it is a plus j the conjugate a minus j when you multiply by a minus j you you get rid of j j goes away and then you have a over this term minus j over this term so this is the real part this is the imaginary part if i tell you find the amplitude the magnitude it's basically the square root of the first one is square plus the second term is square the phase minus tan inverse minus 2 pi f over alpha. Basically, the phase is this term divided by this term, and you can see it here. So th this was g of t in time domain, and then you have the frequency response in frequency domain, and you have the phase. So this is by drawing. Fourier transform example. For example, if I tell you find g of zero for any function, basically you you put it in the transform form, formula, g of t multiplied by exponential minus j two by zero t, and since it there is zero exponential to e to power zero always one, so basically you eliminate that term and you end up having integration of g of t. What's the integration of g of t? Basically, it gives you the area. So, the frequency response of a function at frequency equal zero, which is DC, no AC, no AC value, it's basically the integration of the actual function and it represents physically the area under that function. For g of t e to minus alpha t u t, g0 1 over alpha is the only real value it's also for the previous example if you want to find g of 0 you just substitute here 0 put instead of f0 this this term becomes 0 so the value 1 over alpha we call this the dc, the DC value or the area of the function or the integration of the function because it g0 this is what it means by definition for one-sided decay, g if you want to find g minus f, not g of f, g minus f, it's basically g conjugate of f. So if you have function and multiply it by minus, what do you get? Reflection on x-axis. Reflection on x-axis, which is time in our case. If you have function g of f and multiply f with minus what do you get reflection on y axis this reflection on y axis in the frequency domain is exactly equal to taking the conjugate of the function we need to look at only positive frequencies for real valued signals now duality 
What do we mean by duality? If you have a function g of t simply and take the Fourier transform of it, what do you get? g of f, the function in the frequency domain. What if you have g here function of t instead of being function of f? The same function g of f, yes, the one you got after the transform, but instead of f, what t? You remember this example here? Instead of f, this g of f, instead of f here, what t? What if you take the Fourier transform of this? Now, since it's t in time domain, you can take the Fourier transform. You will find g of minus f. It's not g of f. So basically, the, the, re the result will be g of minus f. So what's the result here will be e to plus af. This is what I mean by duality. Yes, basically, it's as simple as this. You have a function in time, take the Fourier transform, you have it in frequency. Replace f by t and take the Fourier transform, you get g of the reflection of the function around y-axis. Clear? This we call the, this principle the principle of duality. Another example, we got the example of exponential decaying function. We have the example of unit rectangle function. We denote it by this, this rect, we call it. It's defined to be equal to 1 when t greater than minus 1 less than, uh, greater than minus half less than half, and otherwise 0. What do you do? Take the Fourier transform, just put the function in the, in the formula, and multiply by e to minus j to pi ft and integrate you will find out that the result sink by f and it's obvious we know we know that the transform of rect is sink by duality we know that if you have sink by t here instead of f if i put t and take the fourier transform what do you get rect not of t rect of f but since it's duality, you just put minus. You change the variable and put minus. And now this is exactly equal to rect of f. Why is that? Anybody knows why the minus is equal to the the minus here is equal to exactly because of symmetry because this function is even since this function is even basically what do you get here yes the function is even this is rect you get this and these are the axes if i tell you this is rect minus f What's rect f? Or this is rect f. What's rect minus f? Basically, you need to reflect it around this axis. Yes? When you reflect it, returns back to be the same. That's why. It's because it's even function. Also, it happens if you have cosine. Yes? Why? Because cosine is also even function. This side similar to this side. When you reflect it, it becomes the same. We, we say that rect t and sinc by f are Fourier pair. Every finite width pulse has a transform with unbounded frequencies. What do we notice here? When we, when we have rect, the Fourier transform of rect is sinc. Yes, sinc. You, how do you draw sinc? You keep the sink keeps oscillating from minus infinity to infinity. What's this? What does this mean? If you have a signal in time domain that's not confined and defined over a strict interval, then in the other domain will be spreading. It will be too much expanded. Yes? 
this is physics. If you squeeze your pulse in one domain, in the other domain will be too much spread. For example, if you have an impulse in time domain, like this, what do you get in the frequency domain? It's too much narrow in time. In frequency will be too much wide, like this. So what happens? Here you were vertical, here you become horizontal. So the power is less and it takes more frequency, it, it covers all the frequency components basically. Clear? What about time scaling? This is another property. We said if you have a function, yes, we explained in the previous lecture that if, if we have a function like this, this we call it g of t, and we multiply it by, we, we want to see g alpha t, and alpha between 0 and 1, and let's say alpha is half, what will happen? If alpha is half, what will happen to the function g half t? The function will become like this, expand, as if you are stitching it what if you yes what if you want to multiply this instead of half by two this one what will happen it will shrink so the function will become instead of being like this will become like this will shrink so if you multiply your function it, t not the function the variable t by a value between 0 and 1, it will expand. If you multiply it by a value greater than 1, it will shrink. By math, you just put and substitute the value and you will verify it. What about the Fourier transform of it? When you take the Fourier transform of this, which is this, take the Fourier transform, I am writing it like this, take the Fourier transform of this. Which one will be wider in the frequency domain, this or this or this? wider in the frequency domain the one that's narrower in time domain will become wider in frequency domain so which one last one because it's the narrowest here is it clear so basically why because when you take the Fourier transform of g alpha t the output is 1 over alpha g f over alpha yes so basically you multiply here, you divide here. So if it is small here, if it is narrow, here will be wide. If it is wide here, here will be narrow. Clear? This special case when alpha is equal to minus 1, the Fourier transform g of minus alpha is g of minus f, the frequency. Overall, what do we need to know here? That compressing in time compressing your signal in time corresponds to expansion frequency expansion and red and reduction in amplitude yes the amplitude will become less than it was before and vice versa if you want to expand in time it will be compressed in frequency and you can also say that the sharper the pulse the wider the spectrum, the sharper the pulse in time, the wider the spectrum in the frequency. Easy concept, but very profound and very important to be understood. So, the transform of a narrow rectangular pulse of area 1 is rect sync, always. In the limit, the pulse is the unit impulse. If you take the limit and keep reducing the duration of the pulse, it becomes delta, almost. What's the Fourier transform of delta? When you substitute delta and multiply e to minus j to pi, you will get one. So basically, if you have delta, yes, if you have delta, this is delta, what's the Fourier transform? Constant one. So here frequency, here time. If you have delta in time, you have 
constant one in, in the frequency. What if you have constant one in time? What will you get in frequency? Delta. Duality. Yes? And this is symmetric. The impulse is the mathematical abstraction of signal whose Fourier transform has magnitude 1 and phase 0 for all frequency. Magnitude 1 and phase 0. By duality, Fourier transform of 1 is equal to delta F. This is the one I asked you. If you take the Fourier transform, we took the Fourier transform of delta and found it to be 1. What if you want to find the Fourier transform of 1? Because you, in the other side, you get delta F. All DC. Delta F means DC. There is no oscillation, no frequencies. Clear? Shifted impulse. Delta T minus T0. If you have an impulse shifted by T0, how does this affect your Fourier transform? You just multiply the output. For example, you have delta T minus T0. You don't know what's the transform of delta T minus T0. You know the transform of delta T alone. So you find it, you write it alone, and then after that, you multiply it by exponential of minus J2 by F and the value of shift, T0, you put it. This is property. You can apply it to any function you want. But if you want to also find it by dimension, you can find it. The Fourier transform of delta, you put the function you want to find the Fourier transform of it, delta t minus t naught. You multiply it by e to minus j2 by ft, and you find the output to be e to minus j2 by ft naught, not t, t naught. Means it's the value of the shift. It's constant, maybe 5, 6, 7, 10, I don't know, based on the equation. So, long story short, Fourier transform of a shifted impulse, Fourier transform of F T minus T naught in general is equal to the Fourier transform of F of T. You find it, you calculate it without shift. And the shift, the shift causes this. You multiply by this, phase shift. E to minus G, E to minus J2 by F T naught. By duality, complex exponential in time has an impulse in frequency. The opposite. If you have it now, you find it this. If you have it in time and you want to find the frequency, it causes also this shift theorem applies to both frequency and time, but you just change the variable. But you need to be careful of the sign. Here, delta t minus t naught gives you e to minus j. But here, delta f minus f naught, there is no sign in the time. By definition, you find it by the formula, you will find it like this. Sinusoids, frequency content is concentrated at plus minus f zero. Let's say I asked you, find the Fourier transform of cosine two by f naught t. How do you find it? The easiest way to find it is to use the definition. Put cosine two by f naught t inside the formula of integration, e to minus j, and find. The other way, you already know that cosine two by f t is composed of exponential by Euler identity. Cosine two by f naught t is equal to e to power j2 by f naught t plus e to minus 2 by j f naught t over 2. What's the Fourier transform of this? This is kind of shift. Yes, exponential here. Exponential, this shift. If it is minus, remains minus. If it is so, but this is, this is not, this is in time here, CT in general, function of time. So, you use this property, e to j2 by f naught t delta f minus f naught, and this is what you put here. And here you have minus, you put plus. So how do you draw that? If I want, if I tell you draw this, for draw the Fourier transform of cosine two by f naught t in the frequency domain, you draw. You tell me there is at plus f naught. There is a pulse here, and at minus f naught, 
another delta pulse here. This is the Fourier transform. Clear? So the Fourier transform of sine, what's the from Euler identity? What's sine exponential j2 by f naught t plus e to minus j2 by f naught over 2i? And two, 1 over 2i is constant. You take it out and then you take the Fourier you, from the property, from this property, you will find out that you will have delta f minus f naught, delta f plus f naught. So what's the difference between cosine and sine? Both they have the same amplitude response, but the phase is different. Yes? If I tell you draw the sine and cosine, or tell you what's the difference, you tell me it's just only the phase. Here is, we have i, in the previous one we didn't have i. i corresponds to pi over 2 degree, yes? Clear? So, important for your transform, Laplacian pulse. If you have g of t equal to e to minus alpha magnitude of t, how do you draw this? Anybody can draw this? You basically have this. You have the y-axis, the, the x-axis, and you have exponential minus alpha. If t is positive, the function goes like this. If t is negative, the function goes like this. So this is basically the function that you want to find the Fourier transform. So what's this basically? This part, this part is this, e to minus alpha t u of t. And this part is basically this, e to minus alpha t u minus t. Okay. Now, what's the Fourier transform, G of F? You either use the formula, or you already found the, the Fourier transform of exponentially decaying function. You know the, the, that the result is this, for the minus. For the plus, when you have plus here, but just put minus here, what's the total result is this? This is, this is twice the real part of the Fourier transform of the exponential function, decaying function that we found in the previous example. The sigma function can be approximate. This is for the Laplacian pulse. You, now you are familiar with it. If you see its function, you can find the Fourier transform and you can relate it with the exponentially decaying function. What about the sigma function? Everybody knows, anybody knows what sigma function is? It's like this, the sign function. You have x and y axis and from signal and system. This is sign and this is half and this is half. Yes? This is alone, this alone, half multiplied by u of t. And this alone, u minus t multiplied by half. u minus t multiplied by half, minus half, plus half u of t, you will get the sigma function. So this is its definition in math, and this is the Fourier transform of sigma, which is equal to 1 over j by f. And basically, what do you get after you calculate these things? You will find that sigma can be written in terms of u of t, and u of t can be written in terms of sigma. Why is that? How do you get this? This one. U of t is equal to half plus half sigma t. Is that true? Verify it. Draw the x, x and y axis. Draw the function. This is sigma. Yes. This is minus half. This is half. Yes. This is sigma. Multiplied by half. It becomes like this. The plus half shifted up by half, what happens? What happens now? You have this function, which is u of t. Half plus half becomes one, and this becomes at zero, and this becomes instead of half, one, because you added half to it. 
So this is the relationship between sign and U of T. So basically, if you see sign, tell that sign is not a different function. It's basically U of T with kind of shift on Y axis. Yes. What's the Fourier transform of U of T? Half delta T. Why half delta T? Half delta T due to the edge, this one, plus 1 over G2 pi F due to the sign. Okay. This is how you can find it. I think now you are familiar with Fourier transform, you know how to do it, and you know the properties of it. Beside the other properties we talked about, there is also the time delay property. If you have time delay here, like shift, you get linear phase shift, the one we talked about. If, by duality, we get frequency shifting. And the frequency sh shifting, this property in signal and system, but basically we use it a lot, a lot in modulation in communication systems. Where do we use it? Let me explain to you where do we use it. Suppose you have G of T, and your G of T now, let's give practical examples. Your G of T is the message, your voice, your video, your audio, your picture, the, the one you want to transfer over the medium. If you multiply it by e to j2 by fct, this e to j is basically cosine plus j sine. Yes, cosine is kind of carrier at certain frequency. When you draw, when you find the Fourier transform of it, you will find it like it's g of f minus fc. It's kind of the frequency of the original message signal shifted by the frequency of the carrier. Why, why we said if you want to send your message over long distances, you need to modulate your signal by using high carrier frequency. Why? Because to be able to send it through long distances in a practical way, because the length of the antenna is related to the frequency, and you don't want all the people to hear you talking or speaking to your friend. So basically, this nice property is modulation. That's why we emphasize too much on this. Instead of E, J2 by FCT, let's put cosine 2 by FCT and multiply it by G of T. What do you get? You get half G of F plus FC plus half G of F minus FC. What's this? Let's say that your message signal is this, around in, in, in baseband, around zero frequency. After you multiply by cosine 2 by f c t, what do you get? You get this. Let's draw this axis. This is time. This is, this is, let's say, frequency. Yes? And this is, again, frequency. Before you multiply with cosine, it was around zero frequency. After you multiply with cosine, you get this. And this is zero frequency. So basically you have shift. What's the value of this? Fc. And the value of this minus Fc. So what did you do basically? You shifted your signal to a different frequency. So that you can send it to your user without interference with others. And while you are uh, complying with the practical size of the antenna. Clear? Let's move on to convolution in time. The convolution of two signals, which is defined by G1 of t convolved with G2 of t, is basically equal to the integration of the first signal in terms of another variable, u or tau or whatever, multiplied, uh, and multiplied by gt, G2 of t minus u delta u. But at the end of the day, if your integration, if your, if the integration of your convolution is so complex and you cannot deal with it, there is a way to solve this by going to the frequency domain. Instead of finding the convolution in direct way, we can find the Fourier transform of G1 of t alone, and then the Fourier transform of G2 of t alone, and then 
we multiply the Fourier transform of these two functions with each other, you get another function in the frequency domain. Take the inverse of this function in the frequency domain, you get the convolution in time domain. Is this clear? Should I repeat it one more time so that you understand it maybe by visualization? Suppose I gave you here very complex function e to minus j x squared plus y x 5 plus something and g of t here cosine x squared plus x minus 3. Can you find the integration of this function when you come to convolve? Yes, when you come to convolve, you put them inside the integration. There is no way you can solve the integration. It's difficult, and if you want to solve it, it takes maybe half a day. It's so complex. Yes, I'm saying, don't we have another alternative way to find this without going to the integration? The solution is, is that this function take it and find the Fourier transform of it. Yes? Alone. And you take this function and find the Fourier transform of it. Alone. You find value here A and value here B. Functions. Multiply them with each other. Normal multiplication without integration. You find another value C. Take the inverse Fourier transform of C you will get this value of the complex one. This is what I'm saying. The Fourier transform reduces convol convolution, reduces convolution to a simpler operation called multiplication in the frequency domain. Note that there is no factor of 1 over 2 W for a frequency domain convolution as there was in signal and system course. But why? Why don't we have 2 pi here, 1 over 2 pi? Because we are dealing with f, not with omega. So basically, this is what we get. Multiplication in time, g1 of t multiplied by g of t is basically, you can define it also in a convolution form. Convolution in one domain goes exactly to multiplication in the other domain and multiplication to convolution. So not only you can make convolution not only in time domain but also in frequency domain. So this was defined in time, this is basically defined in the frequency. The modulation theorem is a special case of the convolution here. When you have a message signal multiplied by cosine and take the Fourier transform of it, it's basically as if you are taking the Fourier transform of each signal individually and then you multiply them with each other to get the final answer. The triangle function, triangle of T instead of rect. What's the special case about this function? How do you get this function? Let me explain to you how do you get this function quickly. You have rect here, yes, and you have another rect here. If you convolve them with each other, convolve, yes, you get this function. Clear? This is the definition of triangle function. How do you define it? It's one of one minus two magnitude of x. Yes? If x is positive, one minus two x, what's the slope? The slope is negative. You draw this. If x is negative, it becomes 1 plus 2x. What's the slope? The slope is this. When you draw these two lines and they're crossing each other as if you are getting a triangle, triangle function. And the triangle mathematically defined by the convolution of two rect, rect, two of t, rect, two of t. Convolve them with each other, you get the rect. Where the factor of two is needed to make the convolution one at t equals zero. The Fourier transform is therefore as follows. What's the Fourier transform of triangle T? It's the Fourier transform of the convolution of two rect, which is the Fourier transform of one of them square, and then you find it out to be sinc square. So what's the Fourier transform of triangle? Sinc square. A rectangle 
sink along without triangle. Which one has less side loops? Which one? His side loops are lower. Rect or triangle? Triangle. Triangle has lower side loops. Why? Because it's square. Let's think. This is what? This is sink, let's say. When you go to triangle, it becomes it becomes becomes like this. And all positive. So basically, what are you getting? Since these values are small, less than one. When you square them, what's the result? Bigger or lesser than the previous value? If you have 0.1 and square it, the result is bigger or smaller than 0.1? Smaller. That's why the side loops for sink square smaller. And we like this. We like side loops to be smaller. Why? Because they don't interfere with the adjacent channels. So we stop here and we continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.